today I'm going to share with you something that I've been waiting to do for ages. You may remember that earlier this year I bought the Fraser Price Brass Palette Box. I wanted to fill this with a selection of watercolours that would be a complete little palette, a really good mixing palette, but something a bit more than that, something that would inspire me every time I picked it up. I needed to find the time to sit down in the studio, play with some colours and figure out exactly what I was going to put in the box. So in this video, I'm going to share with you the colours I decided upon. I'm going to swatch them all out for you and talk you through each one and tell you why I've included it in the palette. I'm also going to play around with some mixes at the end of this video to see what we can come up with. It's absolutely pouring with rain outside. It's one of those really grey autumn days where you have to have the light on all day long because it's so dark. Yeah, the rain is lashing down. Um, it's coming against the studio window, so you might be able to hear it at certain points. But yes, yeah, really stormy out there. So I'm going to sit here and just swatch out finally my final 15 colours that I decided to put in this lovely watercolour palette. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to swatch them in mass tone and wash so you can see some of the variation. And then I think we will do some mixing because I did put this palette together to be a good mixing palette, hopefully. Um, and yeah, I'm going to talk you through my choices. I'll explain why they're included and um, a little bit about what this palette is actually inspired by. Um, or at least part of this palette is inspired by because someone gave me some ideas of what to put in it. So I've kind of used their ideas and I've added my own colours too to hopefully make a very versatile little palette that I can take with me if I go back to Suffolk or I can just sit and use it in the studio. I don't really tend to use watercolour out on location at the moment. I'm very new to location drawing. Um, I tend to use dry media, but this is perfect for taking out and doing something like that. Please forgive my absolutely filthy desk at the moment. It's got paint all over it. I'm doing a lot of work for the shop update. So um, yeah, it, that's why it's dirty because <laughs> I'm an artist and uh, I work. <laughs> I don't know why I feel the need to apologize for having a dirty desk. Surely that's kind of normal when you use your desk for painting. Um, right, so we're going to do a swatch in mass tone of the buff titanium and then, gosh that rain is really getting loud, and then we're going to do a wash here as well. So I'm just going to get a little bit, I'll just kind of as best we can. Just to show you the variation of each paint. So buff titanium is included because I like to have buff titanium in my palettes now. It's become a really useful mixing colour for me. Um, it makes some really nice muted mixes so I love to have it. I also really like it as kind of like a neutral base colour to kind of work on top of or work around. Um, so I think it's a very useful colour. And somebody who gave me an idea for this palette did say to include buff titanium. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about that now, I think. So in my notebook here, as you can see, I've made notes on this palette when I was trying to decide what could possibly go in it. 
Um, I knew I wanted to make it a really useful mixing palette. And one of my YouTube subscribers, I've written her name down here, Mary DeFries, I hope that's how you pronounce it, Mary, many months ago suggested a mixing palette to me. She said um, quinacridone coral or quinacridone cherry red or whatever this one is called. So I went with the Roman Schmall cherry quinacridone red in the end. So her suggestions for a really nice um what she called a perfect little palette, which makes lovely soft pastel mixes, which I really like the idea of, um, was quinacridone coral, naples yellow, verdita blue, if that's how you say that, um, buff titanium, and either cobalt turquoise green or cobalt green deep. In the end, I decided to use the cobalt green deep because I felt like the cobalt turquoise green by Schmincoridam was a little bit similar to the cobalt teal blue um, Daniel Smith, which I've also included in this palette. They just didn't feel like they were different enough. As space was limited, I decided to go for the darker, deeper cobalt green deep by Winsor & Newton. So Mary suggested those for the basic mixing palette. And then she said you could add some extras. And so her suggestions were Potter's Pink, Cobalt Teal, Ultramarine, Lunar Earth or Lunar Red Rock um, and Manganese Violet. Well, I kind of felt like for me, I didn't really need the Manganese Violet, so I didn't include that. I haven't included the Lunar Red Rock, I think was the one I had, um, the Daniel Smith. I didn't include that, but I did go for Ultramarine Finest, Cobalt Teal and Potter's Pink. I love Potter's Pink anyway, so I kind of felt like that had to be in this palette. And um, yeah, and then I just added in some other colours that I felt would be really good general mixing colours to have in this palette. And also a couple of colours that I just had in my collection. They weren't in other palettes yet. And I felt like they went really well in this one. So thank you to Mary DeFries, one of my subscribers, for suggesting this really interesting selection of colours to make a good little mixing palette. Um, I'm hoping they'll make lovely soft colours and that some of the other colours I've included will give me some variety as well. Anyway, let's get back to the swatching. I just wanted to kind of explain to you my thinking behind this palette and what actually kind of inspired me initially to put together these colours. So it's a little bit Mary and a little bit me. <laughs> Okay, so the next one I'm going to swatch for you is the Schmincke Horridam Naples Yellow. This is a particularly lovely Naples Yellow. So this was one of Mary's suggestions for her little pastel mixing palette. Be interested to do some mixes with these and just see what we can come up with after we've done this swatching. That's what we'll do. The next is one of my colours. It's the Schmincke Horridam Pure Yellow. Now I chose this because I wanted a really good mixing yellow and also one that was pretty light fast. So all of the colours in this palette are light fast colours um, because obviously I sell my work so I need them to be light fast. So that was pretty important to me. So it's a lovely cool bright yellow. Now the other one I wanted to include was a warm yellow. So I went for the Schmincke Horridam Quinacridone Gold Hue, which is a really beautiful colour. So hopefully I've got a nice, oh, it's a rather large swatch. Hopefully I've got a nice um, array of yellows to mix with here. So it looks quite different when it's in a wash, doesn't it? Look at that. So the next one I decided to include, I wasn't thinking of including this at first, but I kind of just felt it worked well with the others, is the Daniel Smith Bloodstone. It's a gorgeous sort of violety brown, I guess you would say. I kind of felt like it would be nice to have a brown in this palette. It's hard to describe this colour, it's almost, it's almost grey in a way, but kind of brown too. 
I don't know. I sometimes think I'm not very good at describing colours. But it's a really beautiful one. And I just felt like it worked with this palette. I felt like for my style of painting, it's going to be quite useful. So that's why I went with that. So let me show you this cherry quinacridone red. It's really quite an amazing colour. I do think she suggested that I get, oh, I've got rather a lot there, um, that I get the Roman small. That's why I got um, this particular one. such a pretty colour though. I mean it's not a colour I would use I think in my work generally but um, it's definitely going to be useful as a mixing colour. I think maybe sometimes if I want to add a little bright element to my work. It's such a pretty I mean, red isn't really my thing, but something like this, where it's definitely erring more towards pink, I'm really liking. So the next one is the Roman Schmall Potter's Pink. Now I have a Winsor & Newton Potter's Pink and a Schmincke Horridam in some other palettes, and I really love both of them. I don't think I've met a Potter's Pink I didn't like yet. I love the texture, the granulation of it. And just this really lovely sort of soft, natural vintage colour. Whoops, that was a bit big. Not my neatest ever swatches, but we're just getting an idea of what this palette looks like. I will make a little tiny swatch card to keep in with the palette um, so I don't forget what these colours are. And we'll see how I get on with this palette and how useful these colours are to me. Um, if I feel like changing it around, I can easily you know, switch them around. You can just take them out, slide them out. One thing I'm finding a bit difficult is the fact that they're sliding around in this palette quite a lot. There's quite a lot of movement um, of the pans. As you can see, they're quite loose. Um, so if any of you have any ideas for how to stop them from moving around quite so much, that would be brilliant. Right, let's do this one. This is the Schmincke Horridam Tundra Violet. Now, I included this because not only is it a beautiful, dark, moody colour, which is right up my street, um, it was a paint that I bought a few months ago and I hadn't actually put it in any of my palettes yet, so it was paletteless. So I kind of felt like it would be a nice addition to this one and it's nice to be able to find a home for it at last as well. Such a pretty colour though. I might just add a little bit more water to this one because it's a granulating colour and um, the more water you add the more you'll see that amazing colour separation and granulation. So I knew I wanted to have a Payne's Grey in this palette. I have several different Payne's Greys and I love, well I love all of them really, they do vary a bit. This one um, I poured it into one of these little paint pans from a tube and I'd obviously had it in another palette at some point but I'd taken it out for some reason and so it didn't have a palette currently and um, I thought it would be useful in this one because it's quite a dark Payne's Grey and I kind of felt to balance out these very pastely paler colours I needed some dark colours too so that's why I've chosen that one, but it could be any Payne's Grey, to be honest. I'd be happy with any Payne's Grey in there. It's just that I use Payne's Grey a lot. It's one of my most used and most loved colours. So it had to go in this palette. Okay, so the next one was one of Mary's suggestions. 
and this is the Daniel Smith Cobalt Teal. Um, I'm not sure she specifically said I should get the Daniel Smith one, but I already had it because it's in my other palettes, um, or at least one of my other palettes. And so that's the one I'm using. But she said this could be a good additional colour. And I really like the idea of having that in there. So that's the one we've gone for. And next is Verdita Blue, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I've never had this colour before. And um, so, yeah, I was quite interested to see how that looks. Be interesting to do some mixes with this one, but this was one of her suggestions for the main mixing palette. And I went with the Holbein Artists version of this. Very pretty blue. It's a real summery looking blue, isn't it? And so she also suggested that I added an ultramarine um, as a good mixing colour. So I went with Ultramarine Finest, the Schmincke Horodam version. Oh, look at that, so beautiful. I don't tend to use this colour just as it is though, even though I do think it's lovely. Um, it just doesn't seem to really suit my work, just used as it is, but it's gonna be a great mixing colour. So I've included it with mixing in mind, really. And the next one is the Winsor & Newton Professional Cobalt Green Deep. I bought this as a little pan. Do you see how they're sliding around in there a lot? Especially these smaller pans, the Schmincke ones and the Winsor & Newton pans are a little bit smaller and they're kind of sliding around and I don't know quite what to do about that. Um, but this colour, I was really surprised by how lovely it is. It's really just my kind of green. Absolutely beautiful. So I'm glad that I went with that one. And I'll use the other one. Um, was it Cobalt Turquoise Green, I think? The Schmincke one that I bought thinking it might go in this palette. I'll use it in another palette for sure. And the next one was something I decided to add. It's the Holbein Artists Green Grey. Now, partly this was because I wanted a slightly different green in this palette and partly because it was a tube of paint that I bought that currently doesn't have a home in any of my other palettes. And the only reason for that was I'd already put the palettes together at the time I bought this. It's quite a recent one. So, so I thought, let's put it in this one. It could be useful to have a slightly warmer, uh, kind of yellow green really, isn't it? And finally, it was a bit of a decision between the Daniel Smith Lamp Black and the M. Graham Neutral Tint. In the end, I went for the M. Graham Neutral Tint. So this is kind of like my black substitute, I guess you could say, because in mass tone, it looks pretty much black. But it's more versatile than black because, oh, spraying water everywhere because in a wash, you can see that lovely violet tone coming through. And so we can use it more like a gray and it's an incredibly good mixing color. So, so let's let these dry and then I'll hold them up closer to the camera so you can have a good look at them. So I think I'm going to start by mixing some of the colours that Mary suggested. So if we go with the Naples yellow, just pop a bit of that in there and mix it with the Verdita blue. I 
just like to see what we can come up with. Okay, so that's just a hint of verdis of blue. I'm gonna add, oh dear, they're gonna get messy, aren't they? I'm gonna add a little bit more. By the way, this palette is so beautiful that I've kind of got that thing where you feel a little bit intimidated by it if something's so nice. Um, so I think actually, I will feel happier with this when it's a little bit more covered in paint. And um, I suppose I should be really mixing on these, shouldn't I? <laughs> but I'm just going to do it in these for today. Yeah, I think it's going to be one of those things where I'm going to try not to be too precious about it. Because I actually do think that art tools, accessories, um, they look really good when they get a bit paint splattered and beaten up. It's such a beautiful box. I will take care of it, of course, but I don't want to be too precious at the same time. Do you know what I mean? Okay, so this was Naples yellow and a little bit more verde to blue. That's a lovely green. Oh, I see what she means by these soft mixes. Let's pick up a bit more blue and um, add it to that. Oh, these colours are lovely, aren't they? Really muted and soft. That's gorgeous. Oh, I love those. It's a really sort of watery green blue. Blue green. <laughs> okay, next I think what I would like to do, I'd like to see what the cherry quinacridone red looks like. If we can pick up a bit more of that. Oh, it's very sort of um, gloopy. It's kind of got, I don't know if it's because it's got a lot of honey in it or something, but it kind of sticky. Sticky is the word I'm looking for. Um, right, let's see. These are just going to be random mixes. I just want to see what I can come up with and just sort of play around with it a bit. So we'll go with that and we'll mix that with the Verdita Blue. So I want to see what kind of colour that would make. Gosh, that's pretty. Look at that. <laughs> this is a good little palette. <laughs> I'm liking it already. Well done, Mary. Coming up with such a nice combination of colours. I'm just going to add a bit more verde to blue. I see you sort of get a very soft purple. That's lovely. But yeah, if you wanted to just have this little um, pastel mixes palette on its own, you could do that actually. It would probably be quite a nice palette to have. I know she kind of sees it as I believe from what she said, a sort of complete little palette in its own right. But because I had the space in this palette, I wanted to add um, some colours of my own. Okay, let's do, what should we do? I'm wondering whether, let's go with the cherry quinacridone red again. So I want to see how that mixes with the cobalt teal. So this is all very experimental. A little bit more in there. These are all very soft at the moment because I only poured them in the pans the other day. So what does this one look like? Sort of along the same lines, but a bit more of a a darker, sort of dirtier purple, which is quite nice. I'd like to see this cherry quinacridone. Sorry, I keep going for that one, but I'm intrigued by this colour. Because it's not really a colour I would use. Um, I'm interested to see the mixes it makes. I mean, I'm so glad I have it in this palette because it looks like a really interesting... Gosh, they're sliding around terribly. I need to do something about this. I'm going to mix it with the Buff Titanium. And we get a nice, soft... Sort of like a muted coral pink, isn't it? Oh, lovely. I need lots of mixing space, don't I? Let's pop that there. Um, I think that what I'll go for next is... Let's try the cobalt teal. 
with some Naples yellow. Be a little bit more cobalt teal. That makes a nice green. I don't like it quite as much as these greens. Interesting because they're slightly bolder, aren't they? Those two. Wow, this one's granulating really nicely. I absolutely love the first three. I'd like to see if we go with the Cobalt Green Deep. Let's pop that on there. So gorgeous on its own, that one. Totally use that one on its own. So that was one of Mary's suggestions. And I'm going to do that with a little bit of buff titanium. Oh, gorgeous, like a sagey kind of green, I think. Oh, not dissimilar to that one, is it? Hmm, very nice. more opaque maybe. I would also like to try the pure yellow that I put in here. Oh, so bright. With the ultramarine finest. And see what we get with this. Lovely transparent green. How about if we add a little bit more blue? Oh, very nice. Blue green there. Well, we're getting some lovely colours. Okay, this time I'd like to try... Let's get the ultramarine finest and add in some quinacridone gold hue looks really brown in the pan that one oh yeah we can get some really nice greens with this palette which is what i was hoping yeah, that's kind of a, would we call that a sap green? <laughs> I love how my swatches are getting bigger as I'm going along. Yeah, probably a sap green. Nice. Okay, I'm going to do a bit of mixing on these and just see actually how they feel for mixing on. So what could we do? I think maybe um, I'm going to... Go with the Potter's Pink, so we haven't done anything with that yet, have we? So it beads up quite a bit on these little, they're like little metal palettes and they're slightly off-white. So they're kind of the same colour as like watercolour paper. I want to just see what we can make with the Potter's Pink and the Buff Titanium. Oh, we get a lovely vintage pink. Very beautiful. So yeah, it's a great little palette for these soft muted mixes, isn't it? Um, yes, you can already see that's not beading up anymore. Sometimes with palettes, you need to kind of like um, use them a bit to sort of wear them in and then they'll be okay. But when you first use them, the paint will bead up. It's... Um, yeah, just one of those things, really. Um, I'm just thinking Payne's Grey. Sorry, this is so random, but I'm just sort of going with, with what I'm... See how that beads up, whereas now the other one isn't. Just wear that in a bit. Okay, 
yeah, Payne's Grey with um, with buff titanium makes a really lovely colour. As I've done this before, it's like a soft grey. It's just gorgeous. Looks really nice with that pink as well. I'd like to take maybe a little bit of that again. That's the cobalt green deep, and just add a little of the neutral tint to that. Oh, it's made it really dark, hasn't it? <laughs> I added a bit too much neutral tint. It's hard not to pick up too much with the ones that I've recently poured into the pans. Oh, look at that colour. Oh, my word. I'm just going to do a bit of a wash of that. Look at that. That's nice. So that's the cobalt green deep with the neutral tint. It's made a very beautiful moody colour, hasn't it? Hmm. I like that a lot. So what happens if we add a bit of buff titanium to that? Get like a darker version of that one, don't we? That the Payne's Grey and the Buff Titanium, wasn't it? Hmm, lovely. This swatching is really, really random. Um, out of interest. I'm going to get some of that green grey. And then add a bit of the, oh, we're making that dirty. Add a bit of the pure yellow to that. Get a nice sort of brighter yellow green, which is kind of similar to that. It's a little bit brighter. Take the cherry quinacridone red and add a little bit of the pure yellow to that. To make a rather gorgeous orange. Oh, it's like a burnt orange. Love it. That's lovely. It's already nice to see it getting a little bit more used, isn't it? It kind of takes the pressure off to keep it perfect. <laughs> OK, so I think we'll leave it there today, but that gives us at least some idea of how versatile this palette could be. I think we could make some really interesting mixes and I can't wait to actually have a go at creating some artwork with it. I think after I have finished here, that's exactly what I'm going to do and I'm going to see what I can come up with. I think this could be a really useful little palette for me. I think it could be something that's not too big, not too heavy. I could travel with it. Um, I'm just going to have to be not precious with it at all. I'm just going to have to accept that if it gets a bit beaten up, gets a bit paint splattered, gets a bit knocked around, it will look even more beautiful for it. I'm really trying hard not to be so precious these days because I do get intimidated by beautiful art supplies, sometimes to the point of not even wanting to use them. And I'm sure this is a common problem with a lot of us. Let me know if you're like that too. Okay, um, I hope you enjoyed this little experiment. I will just hold these up so you can have a closer look at the mixes. Um, as I say, I'm sure there are many more we could do, but for reasons of time, we're going to stop there today. OK, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you could do that, I would be so grateful because it does help the videos to reach a wider audience. And if you haven't subscribed, maybe consider subscribing to the channel and joining our art community. It's a lovely bunch of people, actually, um, that leave comments on my videos really lovely people who follow my channel and I'm grateful for all of you so thank you. Take care everyone and I'll see you again soon in another video.